Hello everybody, it's Linda and today I'm going to show you how to turn these wooden scrabble tiles into art tiles like these. So just first let me show you the art tiles that I made. So here they are. Um, okay, what you are going to need to make these are obviously scrabble tiles. You can use regular tiles because we're going to cover them in paint anyway or you can use other kinds of tiles if you don't have uh, wooden tiles at all then if you have polymer clay you can make some tiles uh, cut squares out of your polymer clay and just bake them in the oven and there you have your tiles to work with so oh, as you can see I've used quite a lot of techniques with these and I'm going to show you the supplies that you need first of all you need some white paint or gesso and I use this archival ink look at it it's a complete mess but inside it's nice so <laughs> uh, some archival ink uh, that doesn't like smear when you cover it with Mod Podge because after stamping these you're going to use your Mod Podge I use matte uh, to cover the tiles it doesn't matter if you use glossy because when you're done you're going to cover them anyway as you can see the here there's quite a lot of sheen to these because i've used the 3d crystal lacquer and uh, you can also uh, use uh, like glossy accents or diamond glaze to to cover your tiles when you're done here's just um, a small collection of stamps i think these are pink paisley and i love them because they're really tiny and they work perfect for tiles like these also if you have inchy stamps this is the perfect use for your inches and also you need some background stamps um i've got this one that i'm going to use it's a map i'm going to use this if you have a crackle stamp that's great and uh, also i'm going to use some of these uh, tim holtz clear stamps because they have like a lot of tiny prints on them so great for this project and you are going to need to add color depending on which uh, paper line you want to make uh, your art tiles for you're going to need uh, some color and use the stressings for that that's perfect just remember to let them dry completely before you paint over them with mud podge and um, i'm also going to use my japanese uh, masking tape or tissue tape and i've got some with words on and some colors that are going to match the papers that I want to create my tiles for. I'm going to create tiles for this paper line here from Pink Paisley. It's called the, the London Market. And as you can see, there are some greens and some like light blues and pinks and browns and some black. So uh, because of that, I've chosen to work with Broken China, Worn Lipstick, Vintage Photo, black soot and crushed olive and I don't know about you but I I just feel that uh, having like um, an edge around like the dark edge around my tiles makes them sort of come together a, a little more and I like to use my acrylic paint dabber in black for this because that gives me like a rough edge and I don't want these to be like um, what can I say, uh, completely tidy. I mean, they're art tiles and and I want them to look a little bit messy. So that's why I, here on these tiles, I've, if you can see the gold here, I just used my finger and I smeared it. So um, that's that. So I'm using gesso and, or gesso, not quite sure how you pronounce that. So bear over with me, please. And start covering the tiles in paint. So as I told you, you can use your white paints to to cover your tiles. It doesn't matter. If you want to, you can cover them around the edge or on the back side. Uh, mine are not going to show on the back, so I don't care about that. And I also think that the wood gives a good grip for my glue, so I'll just leave them as is. And I'm going to go around the edges with a black paint dabber, so I don't care too much about covering the edges. I just uh, focus on the top of the tile. I just go around the edges. Even the edges doesn't have to be like really smooth because um, if you've seen Prima's art tiles, they're not 
smooth and perfect and they're made out of polymer clay so th there is nothing wrong in using another material than this it's just that i had these and i think they're quite handy so okay i think this is sort of dry enough for me to put some tissue tape on so i'll start with this because like i said the papers they have some brown and some script and stuff in them so i want to use this Now I've uh, put the tape down and I'm ready for the, the second coat. And when you use um, white paint, if you want to, to cover something, you need to make sure that you have this kind of uh, transparent paint or otherwise just use um, a little towel and wipe some off so that the script will show. And also gesso doesn't completely cover the script. So that's why I'm using gesso or gesso, <laughs> whatever it's called. What I like to do, as you can see here, there is like some color to this and the color is from the Distress inks, but I just finished stamping and, and stuff before I colored. So I'll just do some stamping now. I can see that okay I've, I've created a cool background but it's a bit messy so I'm going to make it a little bit calmer by adding some white in some places so I'm we're just going to let this dry and then they're dry and time to do some more stamping so again with a B now you can see it much clearer because it's not so such a messy background Let's start with the, the blue. Okay, I think I also want some more words on them now that I've been looking at them a little longer. 
So I'll find some word stamps and use them. I just go around the edges with the soot, black soot, just to show you that if you don't want like the hard black lines, you can just leave them like this because the paint dabber adds a little more like hard black color. And I do two and two sides. Because that leaves um, a little time to dry. And then, even though I like getting messy, that saves a bit of a mess. <laughs> and uh, if you use your inchy stamps only, you'll get like a lot cleaner look like this one so here are my tiles all edged and ready for mud podge just need to dry first so i'll leave them to dry wash my hands and i'll get back to the mud podge And when they're dried, then you just put, like I said, diamond glaze, glossy accent, crystal lacquer, whatever you have available to you. So here are the tiles I've made before the glossy accents. So let me show you when I put my crystal lacquer on. Just a thick coating on top, like so. And I'm going to do the same with all the tiles doesn't matter if it runs a bit down the edge or something as long as you don't get it stuck to your <laughs> uh, to your table and i'll show you some pictures after they've uh, dried with the glossy accents on so thank you all for watching my tutorial and please stay tuned for the the pictures with more details of the art tiles and i hope you will try uh, this because it's a lot of fun and makes for some great embellishments. So thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.